I'm on the OSU campus and I'm with Andy. And Andy, can you tell me what your position is here? I am the pollinator health extension specialist for the state of Oregon and uh, I'm an assistant professor here in the Department of Horticulture. Uh, and so you have a very unique position here and I think pollinators is on everyone's list these days as gardeners because we just want to help. So I understand that there's a new um, publication on the OSU website and so you were one of the people that um, had made that new, um, new page. Absolutely. It's a brand new publication. It's comprehensive. It's 41 pages. It's oh. available for free. It includes garden design, so you can pick it up and you can flip and it shows you how to lay out a pollinator garden. It has all the plants. It has plants that were selected to, that were available in nurseries here in Oregon, so you don't have to go hunt for them. Excellent. It has 10 tips on how to pull this off. Uh, and so we don't have time for all 10 tips, so we're going to talk <laughs> about four that are really important that we all would love to put in practice. So what should we start with? The very first thing is a basic gardening principle, so that's nothing new, but you want to have bloom right across the season. So right first thing in the spring, you want to have things like rosemary that come on and bloom right away, uh, some of the currants, but you want to have things blooming right to the end of the year, so Russian sage, uh, black-eyed Susans really cover the entire season because bees are active all year round. So if you only have it for a short period of time, you're just not going to cut it. You're only going to help some of the bees. Ah, and you know that's really important for gardeners because we want to enjoy our gardens all the time and have beautiful flowers. So that's a great one. And so what's next? Second one is that not all the bees go to the same plants. So it's really important, like a garden like here, to have a variety of different plants. Plants with different shaped flowers, uh, plants from different families of plants, that'll attract all the pollinators in. We have hundreds of species of butterflies, we have over 600 species of bees, and if you only have one or two plants in there that are pollinator plants, you won't get the full breadth of them. Ah, uh -huh. and so the next one, the third one? Third one is, there's a lot of people that are concerned about pesticides. The key thing that comes out in the publication is that there are some plants that are pest prone. There are some plants that bloom that are going to have pest problems. So if you can select plants that aren't going to have those pest problems, you can have a garden like this and not have to apply any pesticides. Ah, and that's really wonderful because we do want to be as clean as possible, organic as possible, and just really help the population of pollinators. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and then the fourth one. Fourth one is we've got, you can see over here, we've got a, uh, we have bees that are being managed. So there's things like mason bees or honeybees you can have in your property. And the key thing is to manage them responsibly. So you need a little bit of training. You can't just pick up some of these, you see these straws that you get at Costco and just expect it to work. You need to get a little bit of training and our master gardeners across the state can give you that training. They can show you how to manage these bees. And is there anything else you'd like to add to help us? You know, the one thing I will say, and this is in the publication, is you should start with a plan. It's so easy just to crowd out your garden with all sorts of plants and just know you kind of didn't think it through. Key thing is taking these 10 concepts and kind of laying it out on a piece of paper, gritting it out, making sure the plants have enough space, know what they're going to grow into, make sure it's going to look good over the season. It's important that it looks good. You can't do that without a plan. <laughs> So we have our four tips, but I have yeah. another question. So do I have to have like 40 acres to do this? Absolutely not. I have a small courtyard, contain all containers, and I've been able to put in all of these principles and make them work right there. Uh, some, there's lots of small shrubs that are built for containers. Uh, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of annuals and perennials. You can really achieve all of this in a very small space. Uh, well, that's really good news for that. And so, you know, the website will be on the Garden Time uh, website, but it's a great informational packet that you can get for free from the OSU website. So please go to gardentime.tv and click to that link and get all the information for a new pollinator garden for your house. Thanks so much, Andy. My pleasure.